Among the few plants that have their peak of flowering at this time of year are the hellebores, of which there are some 20 species, uh, about 10 of them native to Europe. Several varieties of which are popular in gardens and garden centres at this time of the year, uh, this rather flower-starved time of year. And one of the most interesting is found here and there as a well-established escape from gardens and garden centres, and that is the stinking hellebore or setterwort, Helleborus fetidus, whose native home is in the woods of southern and western Europe. In many members of the buttercup family, the petals have taken on the function of producing nectar. They have been transformed over the course of their evolution into nectaries. And in these species, the sepals have taken on the attractive function of the petals. Uh, they are designed to draw the attention of the pollinators, in other words. Uh, here in Setterwort, stinking hellebore, these are the sepals on the outside. Uh, they're green and rather leaf-like, but in fact the bees, which are the intended pollinators, see these as yellow. And the rather nauseous smell of the flowers is thought uh, to be attractive to bees. So they're the sepals, and if we move the sepals back, like this, you can see there, just inside, these are the modified petals, these little flask-like structures are the nectaries. The flowers are protogynous, which means that the three carpels mature first, taking up position three to four millimetres in front of the anthers and filling the narrow entrance to the inverted bell of the flower. At this stage, a visiting bee has to brush against the stigmas, on which it will deposit any pollen it may have picked up on a somewhat older flower that has reached the second male stage. In this first stage, the styles radiate outwards and are bent in such a way that the stigmas are blocking the way into the nectaries. But once fertilisation has taken place, the styles straighten out again and move back towards the centre of the flower, and the stamens expand and move into that same space above the nectaries previously occupied by the stigmas. As the flower passes into its second male stage, it expands. The width of the opening doubles from one to two centimetres to accommodate the bunch of anthers that now occupy the entrance instead of the stigmas. The stamens mature one row at a time centripetally, in other words from the outside in, but in a very subtle way. When the anthers split to expose their pollen, they do so facing the space between the green sepals and the central cluster of stamens. This means that any insect pushing through to reach up to the nectar flasks must brush against them. If you don't see stinking hellebore on any of your walks, uh, you can see most of these features on any of the species or varieties of hellebore that you see in garden centres. Uh, look at this purple variety, for example. Uh, you've got purple sepals. In this particular individual, the outer row of stamens has begun to split, as you can see, uh, and you can just make out there the nectaries at the base of the flower, which are much clearer here, where the flower has opened a little further. Uh, the inner rows of stamens are beginning to split here, and the nectaries are now very, very clear, those little green flasks, purse-shaped flasks at the, base of the, at the base of the flower. This, this is another cultivar of the same species, uh, but here you can see the, the sepals are white and there are very prominent nectar guides. Now in actual fact there may well be nectar guides present on the purple variety, uh, but our eyes can't see them, whereas the bees may very well do so. And this third variety here, this is the Christmas rose. In fact all four of these, they're all varieties of the same species, Helleborus niger of which the Christmas rose itself is the most familiar. In spite of the fact that it contains highly dangerous cardiac glycosides, stinking hellebore was widely used in both human and veterinary medicine in bygone days. 300 years ago, uh, the, the standard treatment for pestilence, foot and mouth, other diseases in cattle, was to insert a piece of the root 
under the loose flap of skin around the throat of the animal, a process known as settering, from which the common name setter work comes. And then in humans, a whole range of conditions were treated with stinking hellebore, uh, for abscesses, depression, epilepsy, uh, jaundice, leprosy, uh, uh, sores, all sorts of things. Um, the powdered leaves uh, were used to treat worms in children, a highly dangerous procedure, which, as one physician of the time sarcastically remarked, if it killeth not the patient, it will certainly kill the worms, and the worst of it is, it will sometimes do both. <laughs>